proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another broadcast of your War Department program, Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present the brilliant actor, Mr. Glenn Ford, as the star of our play, Luck of the Roaring Camp, with music by Eddie Scrivanich. In telling Bret Hart's famous American story of the gold rush days, Luck of the Roaring Camp, our star, Glenn Ford, appears in the role of Oakhurst, the gambler. Yeah, there was quite a commotion in Roaring Camp that night. That is to say, the usual state of commotion prevailed for the really big event hadn't taken place yet. It all began at the camp's principal social center, innocently called Tuttle's Grocery. Sandy Tipton was pounding out a tune on a broken down piano while a few of us, we just sat around playing cards. Suddenly, Sandy stopped. The place quieted down as one of the town's leading citizens, known only as Kentuck, addressed a few pointed remarks in my direction. Oh, Kirst, reckon it's about time to tell you about a friend of mine who died kind of sudden-like during a card game. Oh, really, Kentuck? Too much excitement, eh? No. Too many aces. Now, those four aces you just laid down, Oakhurst... Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Kentuck. You're not going to start a fight over a friendly little game now. Well, if I do, it'll be a friendly little fight. Now, are you saying that I'd resort to trickery? No, I wouldn't say that, Oakhurst. But I would say that you're a cussed crook. That's strong language, Kentuck. Oh, oh, here you are, fellas. Gosh, have I got news for you. Prepare to defend yourself, okay? Uh, yes, well, I'm but, prepared to do uh, more and defend myself, Kentuck. Uh, nothing like this has ever happened in Roaring Camp. We've What's been you playing your kind of draw with cards, okay? Uh, hey, now fellas, we're going to play my kind with uh, lead. We didn't have no warning at all. In cards or lead, the hand is still quicker than the uh, eye. And then the first thing we knew, it, it happened. Shut up, Stumpy. Better get up from that table, Oakhurst. All right, Kentuck. Uh, but listen. If that's the way you want it, <clears throat> I'm up. Now listen, shoot each other later. Th this is important. Out of the way, Stumpy. Uh, but, fellas, in Roaring Camp, it ain't every day a baby is born. Look, I don't know baby. about that, Stumpy. What did you say? A baby? A baby? Yep, I said a baby. Gosh, fellas, ain't it one? <laughs> I tell you, it's amazing. It's astounding. I didn't even know there was a woman within 40 miles of here. Well, neither did anybody else till this Cherokee Sal comes wandering into town, uh, and now this happens. Yeah, but about the woman, Samuel says she's she's not going to live. Mm, worse than that, Kentuck. She's already gone. Oh, that's tough. Mighty tough. Well, you can't tell how the cars will fall, can you? Well, I'll remember there's a little guy to think of, though. Yeah, that's right. A kid in Roaring Camp. What are we going to do with him? Uh, yes, well, uh, I'd say the first thing to do is celebrate his arrival. You betcha. I'm going to get a keg of powder. We'll set her up. Oh, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on, fellas. Now. That's right. Oh, this is right. Boys, we ain't going to blast no powder no how. Might scare the kid. That's right. Any celebrating will be respectable and quiet-like. Just use your six guns. Uh, yeah, yes, you're right, Kentuck. Okay, boys. Didn't tell you, fellas. Ain't it wonderful? Hold it, hold it. Why, shucks, Kentuck. We're just getting started. Hold it. How are we going to take care of this kid? What would no woman folks hear about? Mm, see, I hadn't thought of that. Of course, I reckon we could send him down to the town. Yeah, we could. Yeah, send him to the town. No, no, it's a bad idea. Reckon we could send down to the town and fetch a woman up here to take care of him. Mm, that'd be all right, Kentuck. Yeah, that sounds good. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, that's a bad idea, well, too. Well, well, gee, Kentuck, then uh, what are we going to do? Well, well, we, uh, we could keep him here ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, what can we do about feeding them? That's right, Sandy. Yeah, there's a few tricks to it, I understand. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, we can use gin. Gin? Oh, no, no, you don't. Nobody's feeding this kid no gin. No, no, but I mean Jenny the goat, Kentuck. Samuel's goat. Well, she gives wonderful milk. Yeah, now, wait a minute, Kentuck. That sounds like a first-rate idea. All right, that's one problem settled. Now we've got to choose one of us to watch over the young'un. Who's it going to be? How about Tuttle? He ought to know about these things. He left a wife and family to come out here. Yeah, well, how about Stumpy? He left two wives and two families. <laughs> Can I help it if I'm the romantic type? Never mind that now. Stumpy, you're elected, and that settles everything. Yeah, everything but one sordid detail. Money. Well, I'm taking up a collection, gentlemen, and I'll start it with the money I cheat... I, <clears throat> I won from you, Kentuck. <clears throat> Give, gentlemen. Give for luck. Say, we'll, we'll need a name for the kid. How about that? Luck. Sure, Tommy Luck. Tommy Luck. Not bad, not bad at all. <laughs> Fine. Now let's give, gentlemen. Give one, give all. Give for the luck of Roaring Camp. You're right, you come on. Before continuing our story starring Glenn Ford... We bring you an important message from the Reverend Norbert M. Shoemaker, superintendent of Catholic schools in the city of Toledo, Ohio, who recently said, Peace on earth and goodwill among men are expressions of the hope which civilized peoples everywhere cherish for the future. Twice within a generation, our country has participated in worldwide struggles to bring this hope closer to realization. Today, with the nations of the world, we cling to the hope that out of the chaos of war and international politics, Man, under divine guidance, will establish the foundation of an enduring world peace. The period of world reconstruction will call for all the safeguards against another outbreak of war. We must, for the present at least, maintain arms in defense of peace. The Congress of the United States passed the Armed Forces Voluntary Recruitment Act of 1945. Young men between the ages of 17 and 34 are urged to heed the call for enlistment. The inducements offered are physical well-being, education, travel, and security. Patriotic service and the opportunity to replace men of long service are ideals worthy of conscientious consideration. Our veterans have made their sacrifice. The young men of our great nation today who will be our leaders of tomorrow should volunteer now so that we can advance steadily and speedily toward the goal of an imperishable peace. We return to our star, Mr. Glenn Ford, as he continues in the role of Oakhurst, the gambler in our story, Luck of the Roaring Camp. Oh, that concludes the inventory, gentlemen, except, of course, for this solid silver teaspoon. The initials on which I regret to say do not match up with the initials of the giver. Oh. <laughs> Quite a haul for the kid, eh? Oh, by the way, how's he coming, Stumpy? Oh, he's doing fine. Tommy Luck's no trouble at all. Hey, let me take a look. Now, now, wait a minute, Stumpy. You got it all wrong, don't you know? The pointed part of those things, they go in the front, not the back. Oh, gosh, they do? Yeah, you a family man. Hey, Oakhurst, hmm? look at that kid. Yeah. Mighty small specimen, ain't he? <laughs> oh, well, I reckon I'll be getting no place for me around no kid. I, uh, here, here, let go there, young fella. What is it? What's the matter? Why, why he, he just grabbed right under my finger. Look at that. Won't let go of it at all. Hey, say, I think he kind of likes you. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, what do you know about that? Why, the cussed little cuss. <laughs> hey. How come the whitewashing stumpy shack? Why, for the luck, of course. He lives there, and Kentuck says it ain't sanitary without it. <gasps> hey, that was Kentuck shooting at me. What's the idea? Because you used a cuss word, that's why. Kentuck says nobody's to use cuss words within a hundred yards of the kid's place. And that don't mean no 99. <laughs> All right. Cards, gentlemen? Well, I'll take three. Uh, say, where's Kentuck tonight? Uh, he left early because of the storm. Thought he'd better visit Stumpy and the Luck. Stand and pass. Uh, yeah. You know, Oakhurst, I still can't get over it. Hmm? We named that kid right, all right. Ever since he came, we've all been striking it rich. Yeah, if it keeps up, Roaring Camp might really amount to something. Oh, 
Oh, look who's talking. <laughs> Ain't seen you change your ways, Oakhurst. Oh, Captain Teddy. Oh, hello, sir. Uh, what's the, what's the, you look all put out. What's the matter? Uh, good reason to be. Ain't you heard about the cloudburst up in the mountains? Cloudburst? <laughs> it's what I said, abandoned too. Creeks rising like fury. Hey, our mines will all be washed out. Yes, yeah, no, no, wait a minute. Well, now, wait a minute. Hey. How high is the water, Sam? Huh? Stumpy's place is practically down in the stream bed. Oh, jumping fish hooks. I hadn't thought of that. The luck down there. The game's over, gentlemen. We gotta find out about this and fast. Here, here, we can get through this way. The shack is right. Good Lord, look. Nothing left of it, not even a trace. Where, where's the luck? In Stumpy, in Kituck. Look, look at the ravine. Mm, did you ever see dirty water a boiling like that? No. Look. They're in there, and I'm going in after uh, them. Come back, oh, curse, you fool. You'll never make it. Come back. I went in. I found Stumpy's body. His face was all covered with mud. His hands clutched the doorknob off the shack. I guess he didn't have a chance. Then I, I reached the tree. Kentuck held the kid in his, in his arms, tight. I guess he must have crawled out of the water with him. And yet, you know, right then, I, I wished I knew a prayer. What can you say? Hmm? What can you do? Gentle as I could, I started to drag them out. And a, a funny thing. Yeah, Kentuck had a smile on his face. There weren't many smiles around Roaring Camp in the days following. Everybody, they felt pretty bad about what happened. Stumpy, the kid, Kentuck. But now about Kentuck. I, you know, I never cared much about him. No, I never got along with him too well. But when people said what a shame it was he had to go that way, I, I used to tell him, I used to tell him how much the luck meant to him. I told him about that smile on his face and how if he had to go, it was better that way. He had the luck with him <laughs> forever, didn't he? Ah, sure, it's all in the cards. And now we present Major General Edward F. Witzel, the Adjutant General of the United States Army. General Witzel. Today, your regular army is in the process of reconversion from a wartime citizen army of 10 million men to an interim force of one and one half million men which can discharge the complicated tasks of our national commitments throughout the world. For this all important job, the army requires specially trained young men who earnestly seek a useful life and success in a fine pr profession. Specifically, the Army needs men who can operate radar equipment, who can overhaul aircraft engines, who are experienced photographers, who can send and receive Morse code. The Army expects to secure many of these men already trained. Our excellent service schools are providing the necessary training for the others. Ambition and ability alone will limit the advancement of these high caliber regular Army soldiers to positions of real responsibility. The regular army is a valuable service to the nation and to the individual. It is an historical fact that the army has made an immense contribution to the peaceful development of this country. It will continue its important work in such fields as public works, civil engineering, flood control, experimental aviation, medical and technical research. The personnel of our new regular army will be the eager, intelligent young Americans who have acknowledged this opportunity for a challenging career in the military profession, who clearly recognize and proudly accept the regular Army's great responsibilities to serve the nation, to secure the victories, to assure the peace. Thank you, General Witzel, and our thanks also to Mr. Glenn Ford and Reverend Shoemaker for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again on this station next week. Listen in. Listen in.